Welcome back to another video. If you're listening to this, then you are the master of your reality. I am the master of my reality. And this is kind of a little spur of the moment video uh, I put together. Woke up this morning and uh, started doing some research on the upcoming X eclipse, the X clips. And I found some really interesting stuff that I had not seen anywhere else. I wasn't going to do a video specifically on this because there's already a lot of content out there. And I've talked about it uh, quite a bit in some of my previous videos. But this new information that I've found is really interesting. And so um, I decided I'm just going to put a complete breakdown of this upcoming total solar eclipse that will be on April 8th in just a few days and so I feel like getting this video out today you know is enough time before the actual event for people to see this video and just become aware of some of the stuff we're going to talk about in the video so this is the moment that a lot of us have been waiting for this eclipse you know and now here we are in April and it's right around the corner less than six days away less than a week and so we're gonna get into everything about this eclipse why it's tied to the X and in more than just the the exoteric way of it making two X's across the US with the to the previous total solar eclipse from 2017 and our most recent partial solar eclipse back in October of last year. And uh, I'm calling this a portal that those who experience this eclipse will go through, or at, at least the, the consciousness for a lot of people in the U.S. right now. There's so much energy and so much attention going to this thing, and this is a big deal, guys. And so let's get into that. So this is the path that the eclipse will take. Um, this dark line going up from Texas all the way up to Maine is the path of totality, where if you are in one of these cities, you will be able to see a total solar eclipse where the moon completely eclipses the sun. And so here we see why this is known as the X eclipse. All right, it actually makes two X's, one with the path of our previous total solar eclipse uh, that was visible in North America and the U.S. from August 21st, 2017. And then the other X that we have is our most recent solar eclipse from October 14th of 2023. That was a partial annular solar eclipse. And so this upcoming eclipse will be moving up from Mexico through Texas, all these states, and going all the way up to Maine. And so notice uh, where they cross, where the X's actually are. You got one around San Antonio, uh, a little bit west of San Antonio, which is actually where I'm from. And then we have one up in kind of near uh, just west of Kentucky, uh, south, south, very south part of Illinois, also kind of east Missouri. All right. But notice the two X's, okay, with these, these eclipses, they all happen within a seven-year period. And I think the next total solar eclipse that will be visible in North America won't be until 2044. So we got some time. And as you can see, there was a, I guess, another partial solar eclipse way up here in Canada. Um, but we're not going to be talking about that one in this video. But... I just wanted to have y'all see this image so you can see the two X's and also the date, right? April 8th, 2024, 4-8-24, if you just do the, the last two digits of the year. All right, 48 divided by 2 is 24. So 24 plus 24 equals 48. All right, so there's a, there's a lot of 24 symbology going on here. And as I'm sure most of you listening to this know, X is the 24th letter. Okay, so here's the, the esoteric side of this coming in, um, why this is so tied to the X. Okay, one of the X's is in Texas, all right, and the other one is 
almost, almost touching 10 a C, all right? 10, like X in Roman uh, numerology is 10, all right? And these, these total solar eclipses are also known as a ring of fire, all right? This is kind of what it looks like uh, during the eclipse, looking at the sun and the moon. Um, and see, there's your ring of fire. But, so the other big meaning for ring of fire is the Pacific ring of fire. All right, these are your, uh, your tectonic plates and your, you know, like, it doesn't really, this image doesn't really show the plates, but um, the Pacific plate is like this massive tectonic plate. And then all along here, you have all these volcanoes uh, near the, I guess the fault lines or, or where the plates meet, you have all these volcanoes and that's why they call this the ring of fire as well. So we got the ring of fire eclipse and then we also have the ring of fire tied to this, you know, tectonic plate fault line idea. All right, we're going to touch more on this later. This is the, this is the interesting thing that I found that made me make this video. All right. Uh, real quick, I want to show y'all a little segment from uh, the man who actually gave me the idea of the, this ring of fire. And he, and he does this awesome find uh, to Johnny Cash. And so I'm just going to play the video, but shout out to Waters Above. All right? I'm, I'll, I'm, I know a lot of you guys are here from uh, the Waters Above community, and much love to all of you tuning in. And if you're not familiar with Waters Above, go and subscribe to his channel. His art and gnosis is um, top of the line stuff, guys. So uh, go ahead and subscribe to his channel if you're not already, but let's check out this little segment here. So I'm sure some of you are thinking, Ring of Fire, where have I heard that before? Well, this instantly made me think of the song Ring of Fire by Johnny Cash. And literally, his last name is Cash, <laughs> associated with money and finance. He was called the Man in Black. Who's the Man in Black? That's Saturn, the Grim Reaper, the Black Cube, right? Saturnian aesthetic is always black. This is why the judges wear these black robes. Okay, so we got Johnny Cash who wrote the song Ring of Fire. Okay, we got this upcoming eclipse, the Ring of Fire. All right, now how does this all tie into, you know, XRP and crypto? We're going to get to that. We're going to get to that. But first you need to understand how this Ring of Fire and Johnny Cash and this eclipse, the X, um, all kind of ties in. So I'm just going to quickly play one of these little segments from the part three video of my my four part crypto series um, where I, I break all that down pretty quickly. Uh, yeah, X is the 24th letter, just like Omega is the 24th letter. You have the Omega on the dollar bill is 24 getting tied back to Jupiter. Um, if you look at the, the sign for Jupiter, it's a 24. And then like in mythology, you have Jupiter being the king of the gods and overthrowing his father Saturn. And so I know Bitcoin is kind of tied with Saturn with the 21. There's 21 million bitcoin supply and i think saturn equals 21 in gematria so it makes sense to me like that whole story makes a lot of sense with what we actually see in the crypto market of you know bitcoin's been the the king you know we got xrp you know potentially will overthrow bitcoin for the throne that just personally is where i'm coming from what resonates with me and then of course we are moving into the year 2024 next year that's when i think you'll see some significant thing with XRP, possibly a new all-time high. And then you have the X eclipse in April of 2024. That is also another big reason. Now it... All right, so we have the Omega on the dollar bill. Let me go back to that real quick. Um X is the 24th letter, just like Omega is the 24th letter. You have the Omega... Uh, all right, there we go. So you can see uh, right here this little seal, this little border around the face of the dollar, oh, the dollar is shaped like the omega sign. 
And in the Greek alphabet, omega is the 24th letter, just like X is the 24th letter in the English alphabet. Okay, so there's your connection with the dollar, with finance. Maybe something um, happening with the dollar, you know, maybe. All right, but when I first saw this, these X's here and the path of all three of these solar eclipses, uh, it almost made me think of the XAI logo. This is one of Elon Musk's company. Um, kind of kind of looks like the logo in some ways, I guess. Um, and as we know, Elon Musk loves the letter X. Um, you got SpaceX, Tesla Model X, named one of his sons like X. We got XAI. I'm sure I'm missing some. Oh, X.com, right? Now Elon Musk lives in Texas right, where this X eclipse is going over. So maybe we'll see something with Elon Musk. Um, who knows, though? I think that's uh, that's just uh, one little thing we can add into the mix of all these possibilities. All right, but notice on this image here we have two Xs. What are the two, I guess, X uh, cryptocurrencies that you know, probably most people in this community are familiar with. Well, that would be XRP and XLM, Ripple and Stellar. But let's move on to what I found that was so interesting. All right, so one of the things that, you know, as spending most of my, my life in Texas, I know about is there's a, there's a massive fault line running from like down here, up to Dallas. And let, me, let me show you a picture of this fault line that I'm talking about. So you can see here, this is a tectonic map of Texas. Um, and you can see where the, this, uh, this green line kind of meets this purple. There's a line running through and then you got these little squiggly lines here. That's a massive fault line. Okay, just like in the, the San Andreas fault line in California. There's a huge fault line running through the center of Texas. Okay, and here you can get a, another visual of it, uh, but that's like right, uh, that's like right on the, the path of the Texas, uh, of the eclipse, all right, and so this is called the Balcones Fault, okay, it's a, a fault line in, in Texas, you can see a image of it here, all these little, these uh, lines here are, I guess, areas where the ground has shifted. If you're not familiar with what a fault fault line is, um, it's basically because, you know, the earth, uh, the, the plates, the tectonic plates are, are moving slowly, but every once in a while the ground shifts. And the fault lines are areas where the, those shifts happen and usually can be accompanied uh, with earthquakes. All right. And so here we go. I overlaid the eclipse path over this fault line on Texas. And it's pretty, pretty dang close to where that fault line is. You're probably, you're probably thinking like, this is ridiculous. Um, <laughs> like, what does this mean? Is there going to be an earthquake in Texas? Um, no, I don't, I'm not really saying that. This is really not what is interesting to me. Um, what's the, the Texas part. So when I was researching this, uh, I came across this image, okay? And this image shows a 1,700 mile long crack across America, uh, which intersects with the Yellowstone super volcano up there. Um, but then we also have you know, we have this, this crack here, and that intersects with the second largest crack running through America. And I guess these cracks are along fault lines as well. But in the middle here, where these cross, you have the New Madrid uh, seismic zone. And so that led me to research the 1811 New Madrid earthquakes, all right? But just note that these two lines are like, that's basically your eclipse path right there. Also with this one, kind of, is like the one from 2017. So I was like, hmm, that's a really interesting image. Let me go research the New Madrid uh, earthquakes. And so there, there's a systemic zone um, 
right where that X marks the spot with the 2017 and the 2024 eclipse. Okay, and uh, as you can see in this image here, you have the New Madrid fault line right smack dab in the middle where these two eclipse uh, paths cross. This one from 2017, this one from 2024, but also you have it crossing with the Balcones fault line in Texas with the pre with the the 2023 solar eclipse. So this is just weird, right? Like why are we, where the two uh, X's are for these eclipses right where these seismic zones are, these fault lines. All right, so I, I kept researching. I, I looked up uh, the 1811 to 1812 New Madrid earthquakes. That's, uh, that's right here, kind of near like the Kansas, Tennessee, Missouri area. All right, and so this was a series of um, seven... 0.2 to 8.6 magnitude earthquakes from 1811 to 1812 um, in this area. Uh, massive earthquakes. These these are big earthquakes. Um, anything above five is like a pretty good earthquake. And so these were all seven to 8.6. So massive massive earthquakes. Uh, I'll let y'all pause that. I guess this is like some plaque somewhere that's in this town of New Madrid. And so if y'all want to read that, it's not super important. I just thought it was kind of interesting. Uh, if you want to pause that, you can read that. Um, here's another cool little image of all these earthquake, um, I guess, earthquakes, earthquakes throughout history. And you can see there's a big concentration of seismic events happening right there where that that x is all right and then you go to the uh the new madrid um like city website um and you're not going to believe this it gets in more interesting guys okay let's read this tucumseh tucumseh's comet and the battle of tippecanoe the earthquakes were preceded by the appearance of a great comet, which was visible around the globe for 17 months and was at its brightest during the earthquakes. All right, that's pretty interesting. The comet with an orbit of, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't have to read that. Um, okay, Tecumseh was a Shawnee Indian leader whose name meant shooting star or he who walks across the sky. His name was given to, to him at birth. A great orator and military leader, Tecumseh organized a confederation of Indian tribes to oppose the takeover of three million acres of Indian land, which were obtained by the Treaty of Fort Wayne in 1809. His brother, this is the interesting part, his brother, a religious leader called the Prophet, had gained fame when he foretold the total eclipse of the sun on June 16th, 1806. This was before the earthquakes. During this time, the governor of Indiana Territory, William Henry Harrison, worried about the prophet's popularity. Uh, so Will, William Henry Harrison had challenged him to produce a miracle. After the day of the black sun, the eclipse, the brothers had no trouble attracting followers. A black sun was said to predict a future war, and there was uh, a future war. Interesting how this black sun was said to predict a, a future war, and here we are in 2024, like at the brink of World War III. Um, interesting. All right, on September 17th, 1811, so this is when the earthquakes were happening, there was another solar eclipse, which, again, was predicted by the prophet. This dude's a G. <laughs> but, yeah, that, that's all I wanted to touch on there. But what? Like, okay, so there's uh, the, re the 
the solar eclipse from 2017 went over New Madrid, where there's a fault line. It's a, a seismic zone where they had earthquakes, massive earthquakes back in the 1800s, when there was also another solar eclipse. Like, you, you just can't make this stuff up. And then you got another one where the other X is down in Texas, where there's another fault line. So, if you take uh, the dates between the two, these two solar eclipses, the one in June of 1806, uh, and then the one in September 17th of 1881, if you take the, the amount of time between those two, that was 1,919 days, 1919. What's the first letter of the alphabet? A. What's the ninth letter of the alphabet? I. So you got A, I, AI, all right? If I put AI and AI here, you get 1919, all right? So, you know, in this year, we're seeing a, a bunch of stuff tied with AI. And that adds up to 20 in the ordinal and uh, full reduction ciphers. And so, you know, 10 plus 10 is 20. What's 10? Well, that's the Roman numeral X. You got the two X's. You know, I mean, uh, <laughs> so could we see an event around this time having to deal with AI as well? All right. And so then I was thinking about it. I was thinking about these, uh, you know, how these eclipses are going over these, you know, seismic zones. And I was thinking, well, if the moon has a big enough gravitational pull to create the tides, does an eclipse where the sun and the moon are on the, the same side of the earth, um, does that have like an amplified gravitational effect or something? And so I looked up uh, what I just said and I found this article, The Strange Gravitational Effect of Eclipses. So... Nothing is more captivating than a total solar eclipse of the sun. Darkness races across the surface of the earth. The sky turns a stale blue, temperatures drop, dogs bark, and then, of course, there is an alien beauty of the sun's pearly white corona surrounding the black silhouette of the moon. But there may be more to an eclipse than meets the eye. Swinging pendulums go wild as if some mysterious force were tugging on them. That's weird. Sensitive gravimeters give readings that fluctuate violently. Gravity itself seems to gravity itself seems to quiver a bit, or so say a small band of physicists who claim that these mysterious phenomena hint at a fundamental flaw. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I can't read this whole thing because you have to subscribe, which stinks. But um. Oh, yeah. And the other thing, this was posted on November 24th of 2004, 24-24. Uh, <laughs> um, all right. And then here's the kicker. We got ring of fire equals 107, and then you got 71 right there. 107 reduces to 17. 71 is the mirror of 17. Okay. You know what else equals, and the ring of fire eclipse, right? That's just another, what some people call the eclipse, the ring of fire. Well, earthquake also equals 107. Pretty interesting stuff. So, this is a big event, guys. Um, I'm not saying there's going to be earthquakes during these eclipses. Uh, I really hope there's not, because earthquakes are not fun. But I'm just I just wanted to point out that what I thought was a super interesting find of how there's two fault lines right where the eclipse crosses, right where the X's are. X marks the spot. And uh and then there was these massive earthquakes back in eighteen eleven when there was another solar eclipse. So I just wanted to include that because I that was what I found this morning that I hadn't seen before, and I was like, dang, that is super interesting. So, I don't know. Comment down below what you think about that. Um, but this is a big event, okay? I'm going to talk more generally about the eclipse now. And I actually was fortunate enough to witness the 2017 total solar eclipse. 
I believe I was somewhere in, where is that, Wyoming? I think I was in Wyoming. Um, somewhere like right here over the, uh, or under the, the path of totality. I want to talk about what an eclipse feels like. If you haven't experienced a total solar eclipse before, it's something special. It's, it's, it's a very magical moment. And so I'm going to play this cool little video that I made um, from, of this eclipse uh, that I took. Okay, yeah. Hopefully the hopefully I can have that music in there without it being copyrighted. But uh just a little edit I made back in my cool video days. <laughs> but yeah, so and these are some some pictures that I took of the the eclipse. Um some zoomed in shots of what it looked like. You know, it is a very eerie, uh magical, strange experience uh, a total solar eclipse you know um, you know for a moment in the middle of the day it gets dark and there's no clouds in the sky just the sun darkens and that's a, a strange thing to experience you know in nature I, I wasn't really we were out kind of just in like a like a grassland there wasn't anyone else near me and my family when we experienced this um, we got to see the chaos erupt in nature. Um, animals were freaking out. We saw birds frantically flying. Uh, we saw a deer, you know, hop across the field, like obviously freaking out, looking around like, what the hell's going on? Because it's like, you know, these animals weren't expecting uh, an eclipse. You know, they, they don't have the the April 8th date marked on their calendar, it just, it's just, you know, it just happens, and, and it's a really eerie feeling, but it's also a really beautiful experience, uh, it's like a reminder of how special and, and perfect this place is, like, to see the, the moon, you know, cross perfectly in front of the sun, and just the fact that the moon is the right size and the distance away from the earth, you know, that, that all just kind of hits you and you're like, wow. And yeah, shout out to all the flat earthers listening. We love y'all. <laughs> um, it was just a really cool, um, really magical thing to experience. And hopefully the weather cooperates with us for this one. Um, cause it's looking like this whole area, like right here is going to be, it's going to have some clouds covering up, um, during the eclipse. So that'll be a huge bummer if that happens, but it'll still be cool. Cause it'll still like darken, but let's talk about this portal idea. And it's, you know, obviously it's not going to be like a physical portal that opens up. It's more of a, a consciousness portal of big massive event that we will all go through if you're in America and you get to see this this is a massive event on the world stage in America there's so much prana so much attention going to it and people all over the world or all over America are moving are traveling to the cities along this path of totality so that they can see the eclipse. And actually, in fact, cities like are preparing uh, their police and they're they're treating this as like a natural emergency, just because of like how many people are coming to this area. Um, can the areas along this eclipse path handle that many people flocking to such a a narrow band of area? Are we could we see like food shortages, water issues, gas 
running out? You know, how can is the inner infrastructure going to handle? I think everything will be totally fine. Um, but just some questions to keep in mind. So we've talked about Musk. We've talked about AI, XRP, XLM. Those are the two X's, right? You know, we got the two X's, XRP, XLM. Maybe something with that. Maybe something with earthquakes. Who knows? Maybe something with war. Um, you know, and it doesn't really have to happen on the actual day either. You know, this is kind of just like a window of time. Um, that would be wild if something happened during the eclipse, but I doubt it. But how does this all tie back to crypto, right? What does this mean for crypto? So let me give you a rundown, a conclusion tying back to XRP and Bitcoin. And so let's first look at the Bitcoin chart, okay? And so these two yellow lines that I have drawn here are the two total solar eclipses that, well, the one from 2017 and then this upcoming one on April 8th, 2024. And so if you look at where Bitcoin was at in this, this cycle here, um, you know, this kind of bull run right here, um, if we measure from where it broke above all time high to where it was when the eclipse happened, um, it was already up 300% above its all time high before the eclipse happened. All right. Whereas if we look where we are today, this time we are like barely trading above previous all time highs. We're actually at 65,000 right now for Bitcoin. Um, so we're actually below the previous all time high, and the eclipse is in you know, like six days, a kind of a different energy this time around for these eclipses. But I think the important thing here, what we see when we look at XRP's price action during the 2017 eclipse. Now, here's where it gets juicy for us XRP holders. The last time that XRP had a parabolic bull run, it almost had, it had like a hundred thousand percent gain from cycle low to the top, a hundred thousand percent. That's a thousand X if you bought the bottom. Um, but that was the last time XRP had a real bull run with price discovery. That was also the last time that we had a total solar eclipse in North America. This is the important part, okay? During this total solar eclipse, XRP eclipsed Bitcoin. The last total solar eclipse was the last time XRP had its move. All right, if we look at Bitcoin's chart, Bitcoin only had about a, sorry, I'm all over the place with this measuring tool, but Bitcoin only had about a 12,000% move up in that bull run, okay? And that was 854 days. This is the weekly chart, by the way. Whereas if we look at XRP, XRP, I'm gonna, I'm gonna measure from right here. XRP had a 60, 6,000% move up in less than half the time. Okay, so XRP eclipsed Bitcoin in terms of performance in 2017. That's the important thing here. All right, so I think that around the same time of this eclipse, XRP will once again eclipse Bitcoin in terms of gains. All right. Now, we're also looking a little bit different on XRP's chart. We were already in price discovery when the last solar eclipse, the last total solar eclipse happened. We were already up big time. And then the eclipse happened and then we went up another leg, made the all-time high like 350. This time, we haven't even broke above all-time high yet. Okay? So this time is a little bit different. If there is, you know, big if there is some kind of black swan event or or something that happens that scares the market that puts a lot of fear in the market um you know everything's gonna sell off and so i'm gonna go to this chart i have real quick 
because the 31, you know, 30 to 33 cent XRP price is still a possibility. Okay. So, you know, let's just say just for fun that, you know, what the heck, there is some kind of event on April 8th during the eclipse, uh, you know, maybe some kind of, who knows, like some kind of, let's, let's say just for fun, the earthquakes cause the grid to go down <laughs> or something, something ridiculous like that. And there's blackouts, uh, across the U S and, um, and you know, cr everything sells off. There's a big crash. Well, um, our next support would be this, this trend line right here at 50 cents. Okay. That's the, that's the key level for XRP. It needs to hold 50 cents. If we break 50 cents, I think there's a good chance we could get down to like 30 cents. All right. That's where I pulled this, this bearish fib, right? I just pulled this fib from this low to this high. We've already hit the emerald zone. That's complete. We double topped. And now if we break 50 cents, the 1.618 target is in this range right here around 31, 30 to 33 cents. All right. Now look at where that is in the past. That's the, the, the support. That's where our macro support is for XRP, you know, and since XRP is really at like the center of this global financial transition, I'm sure there's plenty of people that want cheap XRP. So what's to say there won't be another crash before we go to the moon. And if there is guys, if there is a crash, down to like 30 cents, I am going to be buying as much XRP as I can. Just just to be transparent, it's not financial advice. That's just what I'm doing um, because it's not going to be short-lived. I, I do think that this total solar eclipse, uh, just like the one we had, you know, the, the last total solar eclipse we had was when XRP made a big move up. It eclipsed Bitcoin. I do think that Bitcoin is kind of, you know, at the end of it, it's big run and, and, um, the, the next, the next player up on stage is things with real utility. And so eventually XRP has to eclipse Bitcoin and rise to the top. And so that's why in the, uh, the three part crypto series I did, I said that XRP is going to take Bitcoin spot this year. So I definitely think we could see another scenario of XRP eclipsing Bitcoin and that just all ties in beautifully with this X you know solar eclipse all the 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 X symbology everything that I've tied into this video I think it all you know fits together nicely with the nice little bow on top and so here's our bow um, nice little bow on top this was from the US debt clock uh, this was a a graphic they posted says turn on to the new kingdom and they have the the x eclipse path and then we got uh virgo constellation right here and leo constellation right here um i'm not super big into astrology so if there's anyone watching this who who has an idea of why they chose to put leo and virgo constellations in here uh please let me know what you think about that you know the the sun and the moon will be in aries during the eclipse um god of war so you know i'm not really sure why there's leo and virgo here but if anyone knows uh please let me know in the comments this is significant because this u.s debt clock they've been posting you know these very interesting graphics um exposing our financial system Here's another one. Wake up to a new reality. Flip the switch, you know? Like, what's going on here? <laughs> here we got the X again. Ooh, what does that look like? Does that kind of look like the XRP logo? Kind of? You know? Anyway, guys, uh, just some interesting stuff I found. As always, I love hearing what you guys have to say in the comments. I do respond to like all the comments. So, you know, let me know what you think in there. If you got any questions, any recommendations for upcoming videos, I'd appreciate it.
if you thought this video was pretty interesting, you know, I think the, the earthquake thing was super interesting. So leave a like if you thought so and share this video to at least two people uh, so we can help this channel grow. Comment down below where you're going to be watching the eclipse from. I'll be um, in kind of Dallas area during the eclipse, so hopefully we have some nice weather there. But um, hopefully wherever you are in the world, I, I hope you have a fantastic day on April 8th um, as we go through this portal into this this new reality. And so that's it for this video. Thank you everyone for watching. Much love. I'll see y'all in the next video. But until then, master your reality.